Hey, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Mama Pies Before the Lesson podcast. I'm your host, Carlos Smiley. Now, last week, we saw Cleopas and his friend walking down the Emmaus Road, talking about the events that had transpired over the last week or so. You know, perhaps Jesus' entry into Jerusalem and the Hosanna welcome. It could have been the subsequent arrest and trumped up accusations in that kangaroo court? Or was it the indictments from judgment hall to judgment hall? All these things having been egged on by the same people, the same crowd that hailed him as the coming king of Israel just a few days earlier. Or maybe they were just discussing the rushed guilty plea and an expedited death sentence set for Calvary. As they reflected, their minds may have wandered to the time when Jesus was in the temple after throwing out the money exchangers, the animals, and the sword. Those that were in charge threatened to kill him, and they remembered him when he told them that if you destroy this temple, I'll raise it back up in three days. Cleopas and his companion may have been reflecting on any or even all of those things. When all of a sudden, Jesus himself entered the conversation. It took a dinner conversation for them to ultimately see who Jesus was. And just as they fixed their mouth to dive deeper into a conversation, Christ was gone. So on Sunday, the title of the lesson is The Lord Appears. The scriptural basis of our lesson continues in Luke chapter 24. So the question that I have, and maybe you do too, is how did we get from there? Wherein the good Dr. Luke told us in no uncertain terms that because Jesus rose from the grave, thus overcoming sin and death, he did what he was sent here to do. That being to save a world lost in sin and restore a right relationship between God and man. How do we go from there to here? Jesus giving his most intimate friends here on earth one final earthly opportunity to experience him in all of his divinity, eating with them, blessing them, promising to send a comforter, and ultimately ascending back to his father's house. Hopefully after today's conversation, we'll better understand why it had to happen, why there had to be a continuance of the Trinity. You see, God gave his son. His son gave his life. And now we're free. But in order to maintain a life free from sin, we need the third part of the triune relationship. The Holy Ghost to keep us, to dwell in us richly until the second coming. Now let's dig into this thing and see can't we figure it out. This week, we continue to walk out Jesus's time on earth, post-resurrection, all within his divine state. Mary Magdalene had seen him. Cleopas and his companion had seen him. Peter had spoken with him. And now, fresh off of Cleopas and his companion rushing to tell the eleven that Jesus was alive, as the eleven were discussing all of the events of the day, trying to decide what was real and what was memorex, probably getting ready to put the whole Jesus thing and a way forward, to a Robert's rule of order, vote and properly seconding, Jesus himself stood in the midst of the disciples and made the whole discussion moot. The conversation that ensued was simply confirmation by Jesus of all the things that he had said and done during his time on earth. But most importantly, it was the introduction to the next level of how the gospel would move forward. It was the mandate from Jesus Christ himself on what the next level move of God would look like, what it would feel like, and what it would function like. But the challenge was that Jesus knew that they weren't ready. These guys had seen everything that Jesus did on earth, yet they were still terrified when he appeared in their midst because they didn't believe that he could do what he said he would do. 
He had foretold to them all of the events that would unfold to include his resurrection. Yet, he still felt it necessary to show them his nail-pierced hands and feet, as well as the bruises still fresh in his side. He still needed to sit at meat with them, fish and honeycombs. But this time, even while doing the things and carrying on the conversation in a manner which was much like that he had done many times before, the tone and the tenor of the conversation was different. Something had changed. The relationship was now different. Jesus was now operating in his full divine state. So the agenda had now morphed from an I'll do to a you do. The time had come for them to take responsibility for the continuance of the gospel. Repentance and remission of sins needed to be preached and explained to the people. It had to start in the same city with the same people that had just crucified Christ, that being Jerusalem. It was going to be a big assignment, and Jesus knew that they needed a renewed prayer life, a longer wait life, a stronger faith life. Because although the gospel would begin there in Jerusalem, They would now be the ones responsible for its deliverance, not just there in Jerusalem and Samaria, but to the uttermost parts of the world. That's why he told them in the 49th verse that, and behold, I'll send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endowed with the power from on high. That promise was the Holy Ghost. It would take 50 days for the full manifestation of it to arrive from the resurrection to the Pentecost, because in the meantime, they needed to grow up. They needed the Holy Ghost to work on them, to work in them, lead them into an understanding of the word of God. They needed the Holy Ghost to sustain and prepare them to move into hostile territory so that they could preach the word both in season and out of season so that souls could be saved and lives could be transformed. So he took them out to the Mount of Olives, and it was here, one final time in the earthly realm, Jesus commissioned the brothers to be witnesses unto him, not just in Jerusalem, not just in Samaria, but into the uttermost parts of the world. He then blessed the brothers there also, He began his ascent back into the heavenlies. So on Sunday, the wait begins in the upper room. The prayers to finally get on one accord. So that 50 days later, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the apostle Peter could lift up his voice and say unto those that were in attendance at the feast, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto ye and hearken to my words. For these are not drunk, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hey, I'm looking forward to next week's lesson as we go back in and dig a little deeper here on the Before the Lesson podcast. Remember to subscribe to our Mama Pie Sunday School Class YouTube channel. And until next time, be blessed. I decided
Shining armor, 